What's up, everybody? Welcome back. I just want to do a quick video on the masking dilemma. The masking dilemma has popped up in a couple of videos, and specifically in this video, I want to cover the bone conduction masking dilemma, what it is, how it happens, why it happens, and just kind of try and present it in a different way to help you all. I know determining when you're in a masking dilemma is a tricky thing for everybody, so I just want to make a little video, and hopefully this will help some of you uh, figure out the masking dilemma. All right, so with this audiogram, we have completed air conduction and bone conduction testing in the left and the right ear. And the next step for us to do is we see this big air bone gap between the bone conduction and the air conduction thresholds in both ears. So we've got a couple of questions here. Do we really have a bilateral conductive loss or um, are some of these thresholds not true thresholds? For example, in the right ear, presenting at zero dBHL, it may be crossing over to the left ear since bone conduction stimuli stimulate both cochlea. So perhaps this is the true threshold in the left ear and the right ear, when we put the, the uh, vibrating stimulator on the right mastoid, it's really just stimulating the left cochlea and giving us a response from the left ear. Remember the, the interaural attenuation for bone conduction is often assumed to be zero. So if you present at zero dB, it's being heard in the right ear at zero and in the left ear at zero. So we're not really sure which ear is responding to these bone conduction uh, presentations. So to solve that, we would need to mask. And if you want to learn about masking, there's a two parts video series that I'll put in some of the cards above to, that um, helps you walk through determining when to mask bone conduction and how to mask. And so uh, for this video, we're focusing on the masking dilemma. So we'll just jump right into it. The starting level you should use for masking for bone conduction testing is the air conduction threshold of the non-test ear plus a 10 dB safety pad plus the occlusion effect. At 1000 hertz, we often assume the occlusion effect to be 10 dB. Um, there is a possibility that the occlusion effect won't apply here because we may have a conductive component. So I'll go ahead and show you. We'll even be conservative here. We'll remove that conductive, uh, we'll remove the occlusion effect from this calculation and just show you a, a straightforward example of a conservative guess at, at the mass, running into the masking dilemma. So here we go. We've got our starting level the right way and we're ready to go. And so we present the stimulus and we don't get a response. So we're going, yes, that wasn't a real response. That right ear threshold at zero is incorrect. So we've got to raise our threshold. So we, we raise the level and we get a response. Great, we're plateau mass. Raise it and we don't get a response. So we're, we're figuring it out. And to the beginning, uh, yeah, I'm doing it. I'm doing the plateau and you realize that uh, everything is working for you. Until you get to the point where you get the bone conduction threshold that passes the air conduction threshold. And this can be really confusing where you realize, you know, where did I go wrong? I was doing the plateau masking method. When they didn't respond, I raised my masking level. And when uh, they did respond, didn't respond, I raised my stimulus level. So how did I end up with a dead ear through bone conduction and uh, perfectly fine air conduction thresholds. What did I miss? Well, let's go back and look at our starting masking level. When you put the master in at 10 dB above the air conduction threshold, we need to think about how much of this master is crossing over to the non-test or into the test ear. So if we have 45 dB of masking going in, that master is an air conducted signal that will lose through interaural attenuation about 40 dB as it passes over into the test ear. So we often think about crossover hearing happening when you present a signal that's so loud that it's crossing over to the non-test ear, but that happens the other way too. When we present a masker that's so loud, it can cross over to the test ear. And this is really what the, the, the core issue is with the masking dilemma is you have to present a signal that's so loud that it crosses over and masks the threshold that you're trying to find. So let's look at that. We're presenting at 45, it's losing 40 dB, so it's crossing over at 5 dB. So we're presenting a signal at zero dBHL and the masking is crossing over at five dBHL. The odds of hearing that tone are pretty low because it's being covered up by the crossed over masker 
that's crossing over into the test ear. Let's look at this a different way. With the masking tool turned on, you can see that the level of the masker is so high that it's actually crossing over and covering up the stimulus level that we're presenting. So if we present here, of course we're not going to hear it, not because we're not at the true threshold. In fact, we are at the true threshold for this case, but we couldn't ever truly mask to find that out because the masking that's crossing over is so loud that it's already covering up the signal. So then why did your plateau method work? Well, when you raised the signal level, suddenly you raised it to a point where the signal is loud enough to be heard over the crossover masking level. So you started a plateau to um, figure out what the true threshold is when really you're just, you're not finding a threshold, you're finding the point where the stimulus presentation level is finally overcoming the crossed over masking. And in fact, if we show the true thresholds, you'll see that we're way above our actual true threshold because in this scenario, we cannot mask. The starting level you should use for masking is so high that it already masks the threshold that you're trying to find. So I hope that was useful, a different perspective on how to do the masking dilemma. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below and don't forget to subscribe and like the channel so that we can keep putting out good content like this for you. Thanks and we'll see you next time.